This is EE545 Embedded Systems, and this is week 6. As you all know, after week 5, uh, because of the coronavirus, we had to switch to online education. And um, we are going to continue like this with these video sessions, and I hope you are going to like it. Um, what am I going to do is, I'll start with an overview of week 5, because it's been a while, we haven't seen each other. Then, after a quick review, um, I'm going to continue with week 6. Um, let's do it. Okay. So, um, what was week 5? Let's get back to the beginning. We talked about quantization and precision. What was quantization? It was a type of co-design for deep neural networks. Well, actually, before we get here in week 4 and week 5, we have done different types of design um, co-design approaches. Uh, well, uh, the most effective one, one of the most effective ones was we worked on the architecture. Actually, we did not work on the architecture, we have worked on the architectures which we, uh, researchers have done, like the uh, Inception Net, which was a very nice example of trying to make a better architecture, which will work better in an embedded system. By better means we mean and more efficient using less memory, using less uh, computational um, power, and etc. So uh, that was what we worked on until the end of week four. Starting with week five, we have uh, worked on a different type of design approach, um, which is also a co-design approach, in which we try to decrease the number of operations or the computational load or the memory load we use in our system. The first title was quantization. Quantization was um, actually it's a signal processing concept. Well, it is how you um, uh, um, convert continuous data to discrete numbers, but in our context, quantization is something else. Quantization is uh, using less number of bits to do your operations. So, for example, you are doing your multiplication, you are doing your addition, uh, you are using floating point numbers, which are 32 bits most, most of the time, if they are single, if they are double, they are 64 bits. You use less number of bits, like 8 bits. This operation is called quantization. And when you do this operation, um, both your memory load and your computational load will decrease. So, um, there are two types of quantization. Quantization for inference, which is quantizing the values of a pre-trained network, or quantizing within training, which is called training-aware quantization. Actually, this is the subject of week six this week. Now we are making a review for week five, but actually this is a subject of week six. So what we've done was we first tried to remember, we try to understand or remind ourselves what was a floating point number. Floating point number is a type of number in which you represent a decimal number using some number of bits in which the exponential parts and the mantissa can change. Actually, the number of bits you use for the exponential part is a constant, which is uh, 23 bits, but where you put the dot the floating point is floating. That's why it's called floating point. And actually, floating point single, according to IEEE standards, 754, is 32 bits. And actually, um, it is a very nice art structure. The downside is doing floating point operations are very expensive. That's why, by quantization, we are trying to get the number of bits we use down. And we are looking for ways to use not floating point numbers, but fixed point numbers, because when the uh, point of the decimal is fixed, the number of operations you do are, compared to floating point, are much less. less. So the decimal to binary conversion, in floating point you need to do a lot of things. You find where the exponent is and blah blah. And for addition and subtraction you have to make the uh, exact point of the floating point, the decimal point, the same so that you could add and subtract themselves. So when you're doing operations with um, floating points, you have to do many um, additional operations. However, if you have fixed points, you will do less operations. That's the idea. So why quantization? 
uh, because when you do quantizations, you do less operation and you keep less memory. So, uh, we started with this idea. First, to quantize, quantize a pre-trained network. This is quantization in inference, we call it. In deep learning, inference is running a pre-trained network with a forward run. This is called inference. So, uh, how to quantize a pre-trained network? What you do is, you have some weights, which are most probably floating numbers, 32, point, 32 bits. You make them 8 bits. So you use int 8. And you can use fixed points. How to make them fixed point? Actually, you're mapping the values of that range you use in floating point to a range in the fixed point, which is most probably 8 bits. How to do it? Actually, you designate a scale and offset for it. So there's a nice graph here. On one side, we have the integers. Since we are using 8 bits for the integer, the bits that you use will go from 0 to 2 to, two to the 8 to the power of 8 minus 1, which is 255, as written here. And you have the dynamic range, range of numbers that you want to convert. At this point, be careful, because the dynamic range of floating point numbers are quite huge. However, you designate a specific dynamic range, and you map your 8-bit range to this dynamic floating point range. But what is that range? Actually, that range is the values, the, uh, the distribution of the values that you want to quantize. In our case, we want to quantize the weights, for example, for AlexNet, a layer of AlexNet. What we do is, at that layer of AlexNet, in this particular example, it is convolution one, first convolution layer of AlexNet, we make a histogram of the bias values and weight values, and we see that they actually reside between minus 1 and plus 1. So, as you have you seen in the previous example, we can map our values between minus 1 and plus 1. That's a nice idea, because we don't have any values outside of those. Wonderful. You might ask why 8 bits. Well, you can do more uh, quantization to 4 bits and 2 bits. Actually, after this review of week 5, we are going to continue with more aggressive quantization, which is 4 bits and even a single bit, which is called binary networks. Well, uh, however, when you go there, you'll need quantization aware training. Actually, 8 bits is a very nice place where you can do quantization on pre trained data. That's what the literature shows us. What That's what the literature, the studies uh, all these five years uh, um, show. Okay. So the terminology is uh, to understand the papers we read. When we say low precision, we mean 8 bits. When we say mixed precision, we mean using floating and fixed point together in your embedded system, depending on the architecture of your embedded system. This will be a trade-off that you will choose to use. And after we finish the review of week 5, in week 6, we'll learn a new terminology which we will call aggressive pre uh, quantization, which means quite a lower precision, like 4 bits, or 2 bits, or a single bit. Okay, wonderful. There could be lower precision, which we are going to cover in today's slides. And uh, we have also uh, discussed the idea of compression. Actually, this is also a subject that is that has been studies, studied intensely in signal processing literature. If you've got so much data you have to keep, you can compress them. So signal compression is, a, um, is an important title and people have applied compression techniques to deep learning as well. Actually, a nice study here, which is called deep compression. Let me click on it and find the website. Um, Compressed VGG and uh, actually VGG and also AlexNet, right? VGG and AlexNet to much smaller weights so that their um, memory consumption become much lower. So that's an idea. Well, uh, we're not going to uh, cover this intensely in our lectures, but this is also an important title. So as you can see, uh, we very uh, with no loss of accuracy actually they've done this and 
actually you know this trend that we all talk about which VGG is outside of it because it's not optimized but if you optimize it with a technique like compression it becomes within the trend and in some moderate place not so bad not very good but in some moderate place okay how to test it well to test quantizing the inference it's quite simple you quantize your weight values or you quantize your activation values and you look at the accuracy and if you don't lose anything then you're doing your job correct and actually we've done a very nice example on MATLAB we've done this on class in our last uh, lecture in class uh, just to remind you what we've done I'm going to show it to you Canım. <gülüyor> 